Hello, everyone, and thank you all for joining this virtual event, co-hosted by Keplink and Henkel. Today, we will be discussing liquid encapsulation from chip on board to waiver level packaging. We will be discussing technologies, challenges, solutions, and future developments. I will be presenting the chip on board encapsulation. My name is Donovan Sineas. And my co-host today, who will be discussing the waiver level encapsulation, is Ruth de Witt from Henkel. Before we dive deep into the liquid encapsulation, I quickly want to highlight or introduce Caplink to you all. Caplink is a technical distributor. We have a wide portfolio of products, primarily for the semiconductor market. We have a global footprint with offices all across the globe. The headquarters is located in Amsterdam, in the Netherlands. But we're not just a technical distributor. We also have our own marketing managers, our own trailed, trained sales personnel, and also a QHSC department, and our own hands-on applications engineers. Briefly discussing the products we can offer across the printed circuit board are, for instance, semiconductor molding compounds, but for Henkel specifically, our partner, diatech materials such as diatech paste, diatech films, but also sintering and semi-sintering materials, and encapsulants and underfills. Both the plop top, dem and fill, optically clear materials, and waiver level packaging materials. Before we dive deep into the liquid encapsulation, I quickly want to show you a short movie. This movie will illustrate why we need liquid encapsulation and how it's used. You will see a small demonstration and also some ideas why you should use liquid encapsulation. You should use liquid encapsulation to protect the sensitive parts from, as in the video displayed, mechanical stresses. but also chemical or water stresses. So you've seen a brief indication of why you should liquid encapsulation and the main target for liquid encapsulation is protection of sensitive parts on your printed circuit board. The main goal is to reach a higher reliability with your packages and the end product. But what is a liquid encapsulant? It has three main components. One being the uh, polymeric resin, which could be uh, an epoxy, an acrylate, and silicone, or a hybrid, a hardener, or also known as a catalyst, which could be anything from an anhydride, uh, but also an amine, an imidazole, and multiple different options. Or, and thus finally, a filler, which could be a silica, but also an alumina, or a uh, calcium carbonate. But why do you need all these materials? Well, these materials together form a product. If you add more filler content to your eventual liquid encapsulant, you will get a lower CTE and a lower moisture absorption, which is beneficial if you want to reach higher reliability targets. The drawback, however, of getting a higher filler content is that the flowability of the material will go down, and also the viscosity of the material will go up. On the other end, if you add more hardener to your mixture, you will get a faster reaction generally, but also more stress is built up within your package which is then not beneficial if you want higher reliability targets. As you can imagine, it is uh, a fine way to find the correct product for the perfect application. If we talk about the polymeric resins that are used in liquid encapsulants, the most common one by far 
is epoxies. Epoxies can be used both in rigid and in flexible systems, but the main drawback for epoxies is their generally low, uh, slower curing. Acrylates is another option. These are fast curing molecules, but they have a limited thermal stability. Another option would be silicones. Silicones have excellent high thermal stability and flexibility, but they lack in adhesion strength. If we define the liquid encapsulants, we can define them for chip on board in two broad categories. One being the glob tops and the other being the dam and fill. The glob tops are generally for smaller dies, up to two by two millimeter. And they're ideal for a one step process, making them the most cost effective option for encapsulation. The second option is dam and fill. This is generally for a larger die or for a larger area, but it is also a two-step process where you first set up a dam and secondly fill up uh, to fill the, the space uh, with an encapsulant. This does, however, give tight space control and also shape control for your encapsulating. If we dive a bit deeper into the glob tops, glob tops can be used uh, both by thermally curing the material and in some cases also UV curing the material. As already previously stated, the main benefit of glob top encapsulation is to get the protection of your sensitive parts, but also a cost saving effect because you only need one step of the process. Generally speaking, glob tops are black from color. This is again to prevent radiation dam damage from affecting your package. Traditionally, this black color is achieved by adding a carbon black filler, but carbon, as many of you knew, know, is electrically conductive and thus has a higher dissipation factor. We also have other products which, uh, under curing, get a hydrophobic coating, which makes the molecule or the product turn dark. This has, has an added effect that the dissipation factor and the dissipation constant will be lower which is generally beneficial for high frequency applications. Finally, we have some additional niche optically clear products that we will discuss further on in this webinar. The second option for chip on board liquid encapsulation is dam and fill. It is essentially, uh, uh, you first have a uh, material which is a high texotropic material with a high uh, viscosity, and you set a perimeter around the area you want to protect. This dam has to be at least 200 micrometers higher than your highest wire bond. This is to ensure that there's no visible wires after you fill the cavity. The second step, as I already hinted, is filling the cavity with a lower viscous material. This allows for a tight height and space control for encapsulating the sensitive parts. Some typical applications used within either glob top or dam and fills are, for instance, image sensors, but also smart guards, dam and fill on a flexible circuit, but also on a laminate circuit or other packages. Before we move on, I want to discuss two uh, applications that are closely related being the liquid encapsulants and the epoxy molding compounds. As I hinted at earlier, liquid encapsulants are based on uh, three uh, chemistries or three uh, properties, uh, being a polymeric resin, a hardener or a catalyst, and a filler. Epoxy molding compounds are also based on a polymeric resin, a hardener, and on a filler. The main difference between the both is that one is liquid, while epoxy molding compounds are solid, either in powder form or in pelletized form. Both also serve the same purpose, essentially protecting sensitive parts in the package. However, transfer molding is generally more expensive to start up. You need a large uh, transfer molding machine 
and custom molding plates to get started. However, the materials are volume per volume cheaper and if the project is running along, you have a higher throughput of actually producing your parts. One drawback of transfer molding is that it is used under high pressure and higher temperature to push the product from the middle through the cavities to the mold. And due to this high pressure, some wire sweepage could occur, which could ruin your package. Liquid encapsulants, on the other hand, you would only need a single dispensing system. So the initial investment cost is lower. However, the products volume per volume are generally more expensive and the throughput is also lower. You can achieve thinner and flatter packages with liquid encapsulation and you have no wire sweepage because you uh, dispense from the top down and there's no uh, huge pressures building up pushing away the wire bonds. However, neither liquid encapsulant or uh, transfer molding is beneficial over one or the other. Both have their benefits and their drawbacks, and it all depends on the application and the preference of what application is suitable for you. We quickly want to go through the process flow of using a liquid encapsulant. I won't go into much detail here, but in general, you first thought start with thawing your product before dispensing it. Afterwards, you cure it and you test if the material is working as it should. For dispensing, multiple methods are possible. The most popular within the industry is the time pressure sensitive uh, dispensing. Although also auger dispensing and positive displacement dispensing is being used to uh, tightly control the volume that is dispensed. Other options uh, are dispensing patterns. The most common ones for the glob top are either spiral in or spiral out, but also zigzag is commonly used. For dam and fill, you first always set the dam, but for the fill, either a spiral or a dot and line structure is being used. In these two videos, you will see on the left side a glob top. It is a easy one step process and in the second video you would see a dam and fill process you see that there's first a dam and secondly a filling step for all our european uh, customers and people reach will be a, a, a known word but what is reach reach is a european regulation designed to improve the protection of human health and the environment that can be posed by chemicals but why is this interesting? Because our encapsulants, as I already alluded to, are chemicals and they fall under the REACH regulations. REACH places the proof of burden on companies. So companies distributing and manufacturing materials for the European market must identify and manage risks of these substances they manufacture and distribute within the European Union. I quickly want to highlight that Kepling is a reach only representative for Europe. Any manufacturers outside of Europe uh, could reach out to us and we would be the legal entity within the European Union of importing the chemicals into the European Union. One important article within the reach regulation is SVHC. SVHC stands for substances of very high concern. And this could be anything from carcinogenic to very biocumulative. Basically, substances that are hazardous for either the environment, human health, or both. Many semiconductor encapsulants contain a, a chemical named an anhydride based resin system. Some of these anhydrides are SVHC listed, and they may be banned for use in Europe in the future. I want to state that all materials that are supplied by Henkel comply with all the REACH and SVHC regulations. And if one of uh, SVHC components is used in the formulation, Henkel will make a note of it in the SDS. 
I hear you say, but how does SVHC affect us and what is it? Well, it is actually a five step process. The first step is that a member state needs to identify a substance as very hazardous. This substance is then determined to be carcinogenic, bioaccumulative. It could be anything, either hazardous for the environment or for the human health or both. If molecules have, are found to be indeed hazardous for the environment or for human health, it can be put on a candidate list for the Annex 14 inclusion. This is the so-called SVHC list. There's no added banning or regulations for these molecules. So there are still possibilities to manufacture and distribute these materials within the European Union. But at any point in time, these substances could be included in the Annex 14. The Annex 14, the third step, is basically the ban list. When a substance is included in the ban list, a sunset date will be announced. This sunset date is at least three years in the future, and usually even more. This is to help companies uh, find an alternative material to the banned material. 18 months before the final sunset date is the latest application date. If companies still want to use the banned substance after the sunset date, they need to apply for uh, a special authorization to use and distribute the material. And finally, the sunset date. This is the date where the material or substance can no longer be produced or distributed within the European Union unless specific authorization has been given. Taking all that in mind, I want to take you all to the Henkel liquid encapsulant portfolio. Henkel has put great efforts in getting SVHC free formulations for all their product lines. For the dam and fill products, you see in green highlighted the SVHC free formulations. I want to highlight first both the dam and fill 7010C. The dam and fill 7010C are hybrid encapsulants. They have a high TG of 140 degrees Celsius, but a generally low CTE for liquid encapsulants of only 16 ppm per uh, Celsius. Additionally, they can pass the NASA outgassing standards and they have a low moisture uptake, making them ideal and reliable products. I want to take you to a test, the thermal shock test performed on the fill and dam 7010C. This thermal shock test was performed for 2000 cycles from minus 40 till plus 150 and compared to a reference material from a competitor. As you will see in the wide fields of the reference material, some cracks and other uh, incompletenesses can be seen. The fill 7010C shows no, no cracks and passes this thermal shock test. The second fill material I want to highlight to you is the FP4802. Uh, this is also an SVHC free formulation with an extremely low TG of only 50 degrees Celsius. With this low TG, it also has a low modulus at the higher temperatures, making it ideal for very low package stress. Additionally, it also has some excellent moisture resistance and it can reach an MSL level two performance. For the glob tops, we have broadly categorized them in two divisions. One being the refrigerated, all of the refrigerated glob tops are SVHC free formulations and the deeply frozen products. Those are stored at minus 40. From the deeply frozen products, I want to highlight one product in particular, the EN3838T. The EN3838T is a jettable black epoxy encapsulant and is designed with a very low TG. I want to highlight that the TG is only two degrees Celsius. Additionally, this product can cure at extremely low temperatures. It can be fully cured at 130 degrees Celsius in only eight minutes. And if we take a look at the DSC, then we can see that only at 110 degrees Celsius, 
the material will be fully cured within 30 minutes. Finally, I want to take you through some niche optical applications. All the products you see on the slide now are all clear materials. These materials are used for encapsulating specific applications, such as image sensors, LEDs, or optical sensors. Out of these products, I want to highlight one in particular, being the ABP6892. The ABP6892 is also an SVHC-free formulation designed for low-stress dietage. Yes, you heard that right. This product is designed for dietage applications. But because of its low temperature cure, and even at a higher thickness of 100 micrometers, the transmittance is more than 90, which makes it ideal for optical encapsulation as well. Before I hand it over to my co-host, Rutte Witt, I want to thank a few people. Rutte Witt, Tony Windsor, and my colleague, George Contardas, who had helped me set up this meeting and support me along the way. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me through sales at Kaplink.com or through our general info email, which is info at Kaplink.com. Thank you all very much, and I will hand it over to my co-host, Tutu Bit now. All right, uh, Donna Brown, thanks a lot and, um, yeah, for this uh, nice overview. Now I have to see if I can change and take over. Yeah. So, Please let me know when you see it. Yes, I think we can see you. All right. Yeah, welcome also on behalf of um, of people, uh, of course. So um, yeah, I think um, I'm working now with Donovan for more than a year uh, together uh, to uh, to support Hanko customers. And I'm impressed with uh, yeah how quickly he uh, built up his knowledge and uh, had the guts uh, also to already yeah present this uh, to this uh, nice audience. So uh, thanks for that, uh, Donovan, and happy to help. Um, okay, I will go over the uh, wafer level encapsulation part uh, quickly. Um, yeah, there will be uh, some reference slides in there with uh, a lot of data. So I won't go in, in every detail, but of course we can always do that later. So yeah, if you look at the uh, semiconductor packaging uh, solutions uh, we, uh, we are offering as Henkel. Uh, so the encapsulation part you can see here on the left is uh, a big portion yeah, next to the diet touch uh, materials mainly. And um, yeah, that, that diet test part, yeah, we, we covered already uh, back in uh, September last year. So if you want to have a handout of that webinar, you are welcome to ask. But okay, um, Donovan did the item uh, fill and glove top. I will focus on the wafer level, the liquid compression molding, and the wafer backside protection. So why is this needed? And why is it, uh, yeah, wafer level needed? So, so what's going on for several years already um, is the uh, system integration eh? and that's all to support big data uh, uh, intelligence uh, artificial intelligence 5g uh, 6g in the future and auto industrial um, applications system package uh, type pen in pen out these type of things and what's happening there to yeah, make a good use of this uh, there is a, a trend to this uh, wafer level where the um, yeah the, the traditional packaging flow uh, from first making a wafer, then do the dicing, uh, and then start to package the dye, uh, uh, yeah, bond it on a lead frame or substrate, and then do your uh, encapsulation. It's going the other way around. You do the encapsulation basically already uh, on the wafer, uh, the packaging, and then you dice the complete package. And then a nice example here, you can see this uh, pan out package, which is uh, yeah, here showing uh, an embedded die in the end uh, as uh, being part of uh, this, uh, this uh, wafer. And alternative technologies are the um, 3D uh, stacking and uh, true silicon vias, and that's something we can uh, address uh, probably next time. Uh, so, but we focus on the pan out and uh, 
and also the penny in, uh, in this case. Um, yeah, during my uh, career in semiconductor, 20 years, I have seen this happening, this continuous mini miniaturization, and I always like to see, yeah to see this. And actually, this one is already this image is already more than five years old, but it also shows this uh, beautiful um, yeah uh, EWLB uh, package technology uh, uh, for 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 automotive radar applications. Which is now in the market for 10 years and, um, yeah, successfully introduced by Infineon. What, um, yeah, about Henkel in uh, liquid level, um, wafer level encapsulation. Uh, we are targeting, um, yeah, wafer level CSPs or panning. Huh? You can see here this kind of applications where we are, yeah, normally these are, uh, yeah, bare silicon. Huh? With, with bumps, not interconnect, but uh, you see uh, a need for uh, also a kind of uh, yeah, protection around it on the on the bottom, on, on the front side, the back side, and on the, the, the four sides. So that's the topic we will discuss. Uh, we also talk about the fan out um, and then focus on EWB and high density fan out. And yeah, also this, this technology is being um, Evaluated on the 3D uh, memory uh, type of applications, yeah, also including the MUF uh, molded under fill type technology, which we will not cover this part. So, yeah, why is Henkel active in this uh, field? Yeah, basically, um, yeah, there is uh, for for more than 10 years there is an uh, yeah a well established Japanese source uh, for wafer level. Uh, encapsulation for liquid compression molding we are talking about uh, other other words but that one is anhydride based and Donovan already explained yeah that uh, this is uh, and is uh, being perceived in Europe as an uh, subject of very high concern so basically yeah this could lead to uh, supply disruptions in um, yeah three four years so that's why um, we saw a strong Need for um, a rich, yeah, compliant or SPHC free and hydride free technology, and that's the uh, let's say the reason why we start developing this. And on top, we wanted to reduce the warpage because you have to process a wafer which is bended like a Pringle. Well, that would be very difficult. So, low warpage is always a, an important feature. We also understood that, yeah, finer filler is important. And uh, that's what we also took into the design guidelines uh, for our product development and yeah, same for the low weight loss. So this is um, basically the background. Um, yeah, about yeah, some for the for the, the chemistry lovers, eh, some formulas. Eh, you see the anhydride uh, resin, and that's basically replaced by a cured uh, epoxy amine system. And then it's uh, SPHC. Um, so no anhydrides. We developed um, two materials, and one has been uh, launched and uh, is in uh, production uh, for, um, in this case, for wafer level CSP uh, molding, five six side protection. So SPAC three, five filler, talking about ten microns uh, max, uh, and uh, also very high TG, low CTE. And you see here uh, values of uh, yeah, 160 um, TG and 7 CTE1. So that's an, uh, these are um, yeah, nice, uh, reliable uh, property data uh, for uh, also for automotive uh, use. Um, you see here this trench, which is filled with this uh, resin. Um, I will come back on that uh, 5, 6 side protection. Where, which is, an, uh, let's say, enabled by this type of material. I will later on uh, also tell a few words on this um, material, which is the stencil printable version, um, which is, um, yeah, here it says qualification, but basically it's already in scale up. So just for reference, huh, you see a proof of the very low CTEs. Huh? In this case, we measured even 6 ppm, and, and, uh, and this is confirming the 160 uh, degrees level of uh, TG. So basically, this is uh, the LCM 1000 AF. 
uh, has been designed for both um, pen out and trench filling. And I will show you the processes later on uh, if you uh, would like to know more, understand more. But basically, the key features are that it's a material that has very low warpage. So after molding, you will have uh, it's it's really flat. And not only after molding, uh, the, uh, let's say in mold cure, and also after the post mold cure, but also Often there are yeah, additional processes uh, like RDL following, they take place at uh, 220 degrees. And then also the, the wafer should remain, uh, keep its flatness. And here you can see on this uh, uh, yeah, graph where even at two, two, two times annealing, you know, annealing simulation, the uh, high temperature processing, the warpage remains very low below 400, uh, yeah micro uh, on an eight inch uh, measure this way and that's all thanks to the low cte uh, also low sh pure shrinkage and the material can be cured in mold at relatively low temperatures on the 20 degrees um this is the uh, process of pen out for the people who um yeah are not familiar with it uh, i won't spend too much time on it but uh yeah basically uh, it's in there for also for reference, but you are uh, basically putting, um, you have a carrier and a thermal release tape, you put the dyes on, you dispense the uh, material, uh, the encapsulant uh, on the dye, on, on the wafer in the middle, um, then you, it's all happening in a liquid comp uh, compression molding equipment, you close the, uh, yeah, the, uh, the wafer shaped uh, cavity, and cure it in uh, in the mold, and then after yeah, release uh, opening the mold and release of the thermal release tape, you can do the back grinding, apply the RDLs, and then separate into single packages. When we introduce the um, the non anhydride um, uh, mold compound, the liquid mold compound, uh, in this case, we we faced. Um, let's say a uh, difficult peel off uh, uh, process um, because of yeah, with the revolver tapes which are typically used in the market but then uh, we solved that by working together with Mitsui uh, who developed uh, yeah, the thermal release tapes with much lower uh, peel strength and easy debonding at 120 degrees um, so that's uh, they can support you if you are interested in this uh, technology. I have here um, I have put in some slides uh, later on to show uh, the performance. This is a nice example of a um, yeah fully populated EWB wafer together with the uh, LCM 1000 AF. This is a 12 inch, half a millimeter thin, and let's say you be measured uh, only 1.3 millimeter warpage also after that um, second uh, step of uh, annealing simulating the rdl process so here are some references um it will be in the handout how yeah how the compatibility with the thermal release tape is uh, from the two week i won't go into the detail because of time um the application where this material is also now successfully used is for five, six side paper level CSP protection. And that can be done by molding or printing. And so here you see uh, how that uh, happens, how, how the process looks like. You have a wafer, you apply your, uh, your, your, your copper plating, then you start to dye hard half cut. Then you mold huh, or mold or print and fill the trenches and also the one side of the wafer with the uh, encapsulant. And then you do the back grinding um, in this case. And then you end up with yeah, this, um, yeah, this wafer, uh, which is, um, yeah, let's say, um, cut down to yeah, open the, the trenches on the back side. And then you can apply an encapsulant on the back on the back side and dies, and then you have a nicely six-sided protected paper level C package or diode or whatever. Hmm? This can be done by molding, but also by printing, stencil printing. So also here, 
And the LCM 1000 AF, uh, the same one is used. Um, also here, you see the, this image again, filling trenches of 10 times the, the width deep. So the material is capable of, of doing that. It has also a long batch turf, so a long time that you can process the material versus the current product, uh, material in the market. Um, here you see some nicer close-up uh, images with the 10 micro filler, uh, and also here a low warpage uh, has been demonstrated. A few words about the, uh, the uh, liquid material, um, which is yeah, more liquid material. This is actually a flowable material comparable to a fill material from the dam and fill material, and it yeah, can be um, applied by stencil printing or also even mesh printing. So this is just one slide showing also the um, yeah the, the low warpage performance. It's a little bit higher than the LCA 1000 uh, AF, um, but uh, overall this is for, yeah suitable for this kind of applications. And the big benefit over molding is the low capital investment. Eh? A stencil printer uh, cost of a stencil print is much lower than the uh, liquid compression molding machine. Um, just uh, yeah, a teaser. Um, we are also developing. We have also developed um, these materials with our, with uh, which can be copper plated. So that's what we uh, presented during Semicol last year. Uh, we will present the paper also during ECTC. So basically, then we are by using laser, we are and we can grow copper tracks of down to 50 micron um, on the same liquid compression molding compound or the stencil printable material and that opens the door for a lot of applications which normally are done by the etching um, and, um, and, and, and selective um, masking etc but now it can be done with an, uh, a fully additive process but more in other conferences then our last year, yeah, few words on the wafer backside protection so Remember, uh, this is done by, uh, can be done by stencil printing or film lamination. Uh, and basically, we talk about vapor level CSPs. And yeah, to apply an, uh, a thin layer yeah, for laser marking and or reliability improvement. Uh, so basically, you saw in that process this step. Uh, this can be done with the stencil printable material, but also with a lamination uh, film. Uh, uh, we also do the, uh, a special liquid for that, only for wafer level um, backside protection. Um, but this is solvent based, but it's available. It's being used in Asia, but it can be uh, brought to uh, to uh, to Europe as well. Then, uh, yeah, back to the lamination film. This is a film I think was introduced uh, a few years ago as an alternative for the incumbent Japanese. Uh, uh, source uh, widely used, and um, yeah, we had companies asking for uh, for alternatives and improved uh, reliability, and that's why we developed this. So uh, this is 25 25 micron epoxy film between two release liners. Um, yeah, basically you laminate it on the wafer, and yeah, this way you can. This is enabling thinner wafer handling. Um, it's a, it's, a, it's a clean and dry process, consistent coating thickness, and in the end, the main purpose is uh, laser marking, but of course, it can also uh, be used for uh, yeah, improving the reliability. So how does the process look like? You have this wafer, you laminate uh, by a roller or automatic rolling system lamination and laminator at 60, 70 degrees, uh, this, uh, this film, um, then you need to cut it, uh, uh, cut it because it's in a roll format. Then you do the offering cure. You can do the laser marking, you do the dicing, and you end up with a yeah, wafer level CSP package with a six, uh, a backside coating on it. Just so you can see the process uh, uh, conditions here. Um, some properties for reference, uh, key properties. Yeah, basically, um, it's an, uh, yeah, a relatively low CTE uh, 
uh, material uh, for the core for this kind of applications. It's uh, good for me. And also high TG for, uh, for stability purposes. Some um, comparison with uh, competitor benchmark. Uh, this material has higher adhesion overall. Um, it has lower warpage. Huh? Uh, let's think about that uh, bending of the wafer after application. And in the end, um, these are benefits. And also, uh, yeah, looking at reliability, performance, temperature cycling. Sorry. Temperature cycling uh, minus 55 on the 25, which is common for this kind of packages. Uh, yeah, the, uh, it looks better. Uh, the material looks more reliable, more resistant to these kind of higher temperatures and, uh, and temp cycling, and also MSL 260. So that's in a, in a nutshell. Uh, let's say, yeah, the uh, the the, the wafer, uh, wafer level uh, options. So, yeah, key takeaways of uh, this webinar at this moment uh, would be that uh, there is, yeah, I think end capling can offer you a broad range of proof and encapsulants, uh, including the uh, yeah, green or SPHC free solutions. We can also offer you the way for backside protection films as an alternative to the incumbent Japanese single source in use. And, yeah. Also looking at the wafer level applications, uh, low warpage encapsulation for fan out and fan in, um, yeah, suitable for both a molding and the stencil printing process are available uh, for you. So I think this is uh, concluding uh, my uh, talk. So I also like to thank you for this and would like to open up, uh, yeah, the. Um, now the uh, yeah the questions uh, if there are any. All right, let's see if there are some questions actually in the chat box. I think I don't see any. Okay, yeah. I see some uh, I see some questions uh, coming in. Um, let's see. Um, okay, yeah, for about uh, encap the, the chip on board um, encapsulation. Um, the question is uh, also for you, Donovan Dam. Is Henkel planning or Kaplan planning to discontinue all the products um, which are SPAC containers? Ah. Fun question and, uh, and a good question as well, I think. Um, well, to, to quickly answer, and maybe I didn't state it correctly or, uh, or properly, no, Henkel is not planning to discontinue any products that contain SVHCs at this current moment. And they're not obliged to by the European Union by any stretch. But these products that do contain SVHC uh, components might be discontinued in the future, uh, but that is at least three years in the future from the NX14 inclusion, which gives us enough time to qualify a alternative material to the discontinued materials. Thank you. Good question. Okay. 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 I see also see a question uh, on the way for level uh, encapsulation. What application process do you believe? Um, yeah, will be most successful in the future. So then we talk about the yeah material for molding or for um, yeah printing um, in this case. Well, we believe that um, yeah for smaller packages and yeah let's say lower cost huh? uh, lower, yeah lower cost packages the printing process will be uh, will be. Uh, preferred uh, because of the lower uh, capital investment. Also for smaller uh, packages, typically smaller um, layer thicknesses are used, so that would be also beneficial for printing. Uh, I think the liquid compression molding really comes in for more complex uh, wafer level packages uh, with integration with the uh, components in there. So um, yeah, that would be more complicated to uh, to print over. I Let's... see uh, another question for you, Ruth. Regarding the backside protection file, 
is there only a black color type or is there other color options like white color backside uh, bsl okay well within the uh, hinkle we really focus on the on the black uh, color uh, we have also no plans to go for different colors but if there would be a a good reason and a good uh, demand we can certainly look into that okay right let's see what other questions are there oh there are okay so um i see about the wire bond the wire bending while dispensing okay yeah how about the wire bending while dispensing the liquid encapsulation uh question for donovan i would uh, i would guess yes and I think that's uh, that's also a valid and a good question. And essentially, that is of course true. Uh, the wires could potentially bend uh, if you dispense the material from above. Uh, but same as the the wire sweep, it is an optimization of your process. Uh, if if that makes sense, you can do a different pattern or uh, have a, a higher initial temperature, so the material is more uh, liquidy when you dispense it to solve that uh, that issue. Hopefully that answers uh, answers your question. Right. Well, what what I can add from experience is that um, of course uh, the, the wire bending, uh, the, the wires are getting thinner, um, especially when they are also getting close to each other. Now, of course, it's obvious that you have to make sure that the filler size is uh, multiple times smaller than the smallest gap between the wires uh, so uh, and that's also why you see in the tables uh, donovan presented um, often the filler size mentioned so you really have to select uh, the filler size uh, depending on the distance between the wires all right any other questions um, let's see i think I see another question coming in. Um, yeah, would it be possible to get samples of some green alternatives, uh, Donovan? Yes, yes, most certainly. Uh, if you uh, find some of the green alternatives we presented today uh, interesting, uh, you can reach out to uh, to me uh, to sales at kepling.com, and we will discuss your application and determine if indeed the product is suitable for your application. And if it is, then we can arrange samples for you, no problem at all. Okay, that's good. Mm -hmm. Well, um, yeah, I don't see- I see a, a final question and a oh. good question. Is oh. it possible to have a copy from this slide? Maybe you can answer it, Ruth. Oh, of course. Oh, that's indeed a very good uh, question. Um, yes, I think the um, yeah, similar like we did in uh, with the diet catch webinar uh, last year, uh, we will have a, uh, a consolidated slide deck uh, a handout, um, electronic handout for for anyone uh, who uh, is asking for this. Uh, we will also make a recording available, so uh, for every attendant, uh, attendee will get uh, the link uh, for to see the recording. I'm not sure if also the PDF will be uh, included. Uh, if not, please reach out to either Donovan or myself, and uh, we, we can send you this. Yeah, we are happy to share. Okay. I think that well, is it. If these are all the questions, well, I think we uh, really appreciate uh, everyone's um, yeah, presence. And uh, we are very proud that we had uh, more than 90 attendees uh, during this, uh, this, uh, this webinar and also ending up to the end. So <laughs> that's uh, positive. <laughs> also, uh, thanks to Donovan and um, yeah, for all the preparations and George uh, and then behind. On the Kaplan side, uh, we are together with Kaplan. We are very happy to uh, support the European and also the US uh, uh, 
uh, Enco customers. And um, yeah, we, we are certainly planning more webinars, joint webinars in the future. And please lead, let us know uh, if you would like to have certain topics addressed. So from my side, uh, thanks uh, a lot. Well, Donovan, up to you to close it then. Yeah, I want to thank everyone for uh, for joining this meeting, and I want to thank you, Ruud Henkel, for uh, having us a as a co-host in these webinars. It is really appreciated, and it's uh, it's a lot of fun to dive deep into the materials to get some more uh, more knowledge. So thank you all for joining, and uh, I will see you next time. Okay, thanks so all. All the best. Bye bye. Bye bye.